Python peeps, it's Prof G, and here comes the sun. It's time to break out those shades because we're going to be working with the light sensor to detect light using CircuitPython. Let's code! Now the light sensor on the Circuit Playground Bluefruit and Express is super easy to use in CircuitPython. This is a standard low cost light sensor. If you look at the CPB, it's located roughly where you see the silk screen image of the eye on the board. A8 on this image here is the pin number. Now there's no external pad named A8, but that's the internal number that's used. We'll never use that. But to use the sensor, we're gonna import a new library and that's analog IO. And that's because the light sensor is considered an analog sensor. For now, you can think of the difference between analog and digital this way. Digital inputs have two states, one or zero. When we created our buttons, we used the digital IO library. And that's because the button has two states, either it's on, pressed, true, or off, not pressed, false. Now our light sensor is an analog sensor. It can provide a continuous and more nuanced curve of input. In fact, the results of the sensor can be a number from zero, absence of light, to just over 65,000, which is the brightest possible light. Now there are digital sensors that are capable of providing more nuanced inputs too, so I don't want to get into the weeds in that, but I think this is a good enough introduction to analog and digital at this point in your CircuitPython career. So since the light sensor is an analog sensor, we need to import analog IO. And next we need to create an object from the analog in class that's found inside of the analog IO library. And that's what this line here is doing. And we create the object by passing board.light into the analog IO class. Now board.light is the location of the sensor on our circuit playground Bluefruit or Express. And the object created by this class could be called anything, but why don't we call it light underscore sensor? That's a good name since it's a light sensor. Then to get the amount of light that's read by the light sensor, we just read light underscore sensors dot value property. So here's our entire code. And if we put the light underscore sensors dot value property inside two sets of parens with a comma after the value, we've turned it into a tuple. And we know what we can do with tuples. We can plot them in the moo plotter. So let's give this a try. So here's the code as per the previous lesson. I'm just gonna change the comment up here so it reads lesson 15 light sensor. I don't need to import NeoPixel and I'm gonna change import digital IO to import analog IO. And since we're writing such a small amount of code, I'm gonna delete everything else in this program and work from scratch. Now, the first thing we do is set up our light sensor and we're gonna call that light underscore sensor. We'll set that equal to inside of the analog IO library. We'll say dot analog in class, capital A, capital I, and we're gonna pass in between the parentheses board dot light. That's the location of the light sensor at our circuit playground board. Then we'll just add our while true loop. And inside that loop, we'll say print with two parentheses. I'll say light underscore sensor dot value. And I'll end that with a comma and close it with two parentheses. That puts the light sensor value in a tuple and that allows us to plot it out in the moo plotter. Then I'll just slow this down by saying time dot sleep. And why don't we pass in 0 0.2 or one fifth of a second. Let's open the serial console and press save. And the values are fairly large, and that's because I've got a bright light right above the CPB in my office. Let's increase the size of the console window, and let me also open up the plotter so that we can see the sensor results plotting in real time. And all right, that looks good. And when I move my hand over the sensor and then slowly move it away, I can see the sensor results change. And you probably can't see this very well, but I'm trying to move my light right over the sensor so you can see the light values are going up pretty significantly. Then I'll move my hand over, off, over, off, and the sensor's working great. I'm done with this example. I'm going to save a copy to my CircuitPython school folder as Lesson 15 Light Sensor. Now I'm gonna have my students use the light sensor and some of their other skills in challenges in the upcoming class, but for now, feel great that you've conquered yet another sensor and your Python skills are becoming absolutely luminescent. Nice work.